Okay. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna consider a, a a map from G to H. A map phi. And phi is going to be a homomorphism. Homomorphism. Uh, and what I'm going to consider. Oops. What I'm going to consider is the kernel of that homomorphism. And we've seen this before. We've we've seen that the kernel of a homomorphism is in fact a subgroup of G. Um, I'm going to prove something else today. I'm going to prove that the kernel of phi is in fact a normal subgroup of G. And this will be a very fruitful idea. Very very fruitful notion. So I'm just going to revise my uh, I'm going to do a bit of revision here, and I'm just going to prove this one again, uh, and then we'll prove this. Okay, so what is ker kernel of phi? Well, that's the set of x such that phi of x equals the identity. And, of course, it's the identity in group H because it's the, uh, it's the image group that we're considering here. So I need two things. I need, number one, for it to be a subgroup, for its subgroup ker... Psi is a subgroup, I need two things. The first one is that if x is in ker phi, then x minus 1 is in ker phi. And two, if x and y are in the kernel, then x, y, the, 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 the product of those, is also in the kernel, at kernel phi. So how do we do the first one? Well, what does, what does this mean? x is in the kernel of phi, by definition, that says that phi of x equals e. Okay, so we now ask what phi x phi x minus 1 is. Well, that, of course, equals phi of e, which equals e. But we know that phi of x, that is equal to e itself. So this, 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 the left-hand side is equal to phi e, combined with whatever symbol you use, x minus 1 equals e. So that tells us that phi x minus 1 equals e, which tells us that x minus 1 is a member of ker phi, which is this one. So we've done the first bit. Now I'll do the second bit. x and y separately are in ker phi. That tells me that phi of x equals e and phi of y equals e. Oops. So phi of x y equals phi of x phi of y because phi is a homomorphism equals e composed with e equals e. And so what we've shown here is that phi of x y equals e and therefore x y is a member of ker phi by definition. So that's the second bit. So we've proved that ker phi is a subgroup of G. Now I want to prove something a little bit more, a, a, a stronger result. I want to prove that the kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of G. Remember that the definition for a normal subgroup, definition, n is a subgroup of G and also we need G minus 1, N, G uh, equals N for all G in the big group here. OK, so let's prove that uh, this, this relationship holds for the kernel of phi. So if X is a member of ker phi, we ask, what is, we ask, quotes I guess, what is G minus 1, X, G? What do we know about that? Well, the only thing we really know about it, the only thing we really want to know about it is, is what is phi of g minus 1 x g? So we haven't specified what this element g, little g, is, but um, we haven't specified it yet, but we'll see, it doesn't matter. Well, what's that? Equals what? Well, we know phi is a homomorphism, so it's this, phi of x, phi of g. And now the crucial thing, the crucial observation that you make, is that phi of x, sorry, that x, and because x is in the kernel of phi, we know that phi of x equals the identity, yeah? 
And so this thing here, this this thing here, is phi g minus 1, e, I guess you could put e subscript h if you wanted, phi of g, these three terms, 1, 2, 3, are these three terms here. And of course, this just disappears. And now use the fact that phi is a homomorphism again. which equals phi of e, which equals e. So you see, we're using the homomorphism, or using the homomorphism property of phi, uh, three times. Once here, to go from there to there, uh, and once to go from there to there. So we're sort of unwrapping this product in terms of phi's, doing some stuff to it, which is recognising that x is in the kernel, and therefore phi of x equals the identity. Uh, Cancelling that out, we, we, that, that, that one just disappears. And then at this step here, we use the homomorphism property again. So you can see that a, a map being a homomorphism is a very powerful statement. So what have we shown? Altogether, we've shown in this, these lines of reasoning from here down to here, we have shown that phi of g minus 1 x g equals e. In other words, that g minus 1 x g is a, uh, sorry, that's a, an, an element of uh, ke phi. So x is a member of ke phi, g is any member of the group, together imply that g minus 1 x g is also ke phi, which is the definition of a normal subgroup. Therefore, ker phi is a normal subgroup of G. You'll observe that in this stream of reasoning here, I haven't really done anything clever. All I've done is discuss the properties, uh, definitions indeed, of a subgroup. I've talked about the definition of ker of phi. I've talked about um, the homomorphism property, I use that quite extensively, and I've got this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful result that if phi is a map from G to H, which is a homomorphism, then care, the kernel of phi, the set of elements which map to the identity, is a normal subgroup of G. And later we'll see that any normal subgroup is the kernel of some homomorphism. I'll show you how to prove that later. But for the moment, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to enjoy this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful result, which I've achieved, as I said, with a minimum of raw material. I've not assumed that the group is finite. I've not assumed anything at all about it. I've not assumed that it's, it, it's nice in any way. All I've used is the group axioms. And I'm not really asserting anything about this map phi, except that it's a homomorphism. We're seeing how powerful the group axioms are uh, and we're getting this rather, rather splendid, very, very, very strong result out of very, very weak assumptions. I'm going to stop right there.